Hey everybody, Mr. Covey here. Uh, this will be a quick video um, because what we need to tell you about here is that there are three more trig functions besides sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay, before you freak out, if you know how to do sine, cosine, and tangent, like you just did on your partner quiz and like you've been doing on the evaluating trig quiz, you're going to be totally fine with these three because they're very similar. Okay. We're still drawing angles of standard position. We're still getting the same x, y coordinates of the terminal side. Everything's the same. Only there's three different questions they can ask you besides what's the sine, what's the cosine, and what's the tangent. These three new questions are what's the secant of the angle, what's the cosecant, and what's the cotangent. And you're still taking that x and y coordinate to get these. To get the secant, instead of just grabbing the x-coordinate, you're grabbing the x-coordinate and doing 1 divided by it. You're doing the reciprocal of the x-coordinate. Okay? For cosecant, same thing except you're doing the reciprocal of the y-coordinate. You're doing 1 divided by the y-coordinate. And for cotangent, you're doing the reciprocal of the tangent. So instead of doing y over x, you do 1 divided by y over x, which is really just x over y. In all three of these cases, it's just flipping around the fraction. I hope that's clear. Like, let's say you're, cosine, you're doing cosine of pi thirds, and you got 1 half as your answer. The secant of pi thirds would be 1 divided by 1 half. But remember that 1 divided by 1 half it's just 2 over 1, which is just 2. So you're just taking a fraction and flipping it here. Um, cool. There's abbreviations for all these. The abbreviation for secant, as you might guess, is SEC. So they can ask you what's the secant of your angle, the cosecant, CSC, and the cotangent, just COT. They don't do COS for cosecant, or else you think it was cosine. So be careful about that. Um, as you can see, like, since secant is 1 over x, it's connected to cosine. Since cosecant is 1 over y, it's connected to sine. And since cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, there's a connection there. So we get some identities. Okay? Specifically, sine, or excuse me, cosine is the same as secant, just flipped. And the way we say that is the secant of an angle. It's just 1 divided by the cosine. Remember, 1 divided by is the same as the reciprocal. That, that's how you form the reciprocal. So, like I showed you right there, if the cosine is 1 half, then the secant's 2 over 1. They just flip. And that relationship goes both ways. So the secant of an angle is 1 over the cosine. So you can also think about the cosine of the angle as being 1 over the secant. Similarly, the cosecant of an angle is 1 over the sine, and you can think about the sine of the angle as being 1 over the cosecant. Lastly, the cotangent of an angle is just 1 divided by the tangent of the angle. Or you can think about it as the tangent as being the reciprocal 1 divided by the cosecant. These are identities. These are the first identities we're learning in the class. If you're like, what's an identity? An identity is a math fact. That's really what an identity is. It's a little different than like an equation or a formula. It's more like a fact. And the reason I say it's a fact is because it's a math fact that's true always. What I mean by true always is I mean it's true for any numbers, basically. You know a lot of identities. Want to see the additive identity? You learned this when you were in third grade. Second grade. Any number plus zero is the same number. That's a math fact. Why is it called an identity? It's because it's true for any number. No matter what number you put in there, that's true. We call these 
in general, trigonometric identities. And these ones specifically are called the reciprocal identities because they're true for any angle. So for any angle, these formulas hold true. They hold true for pi third. They hold true for pi fourth. They hold true for 36 degrees. They hold true for 107 degrees. Um, and we're going to learn a ton of identities in this class. This is just the first one. They're facts. Yeah. All right. Moving forward. Um, we're still using the same steps. You're still drawing the angle. You're still thinking about the reference angle. You're still putting down the coordinates. You're still using all students take calculus. Only you connect cosine with secant, sine with cosecant, and tangent with cotangent. If cosine is negative, then the reciprocal of it's still negative, right? If a number is negative and you flip it, it's still negative. If your sine is negative, then the cosecant is going to be negative. Flipping a number isn't going to change whether it's positive or negative. Okay. Um, I'm going to do a couple of these with you. Specifically, I want to stick to the ones that are new. And then uh, you can do more of these for practice. The answers are at the end here. Oops, sorry. They're over here at the end. Cool. I'm just going to do a couple of them with you. This really shouldn't be bad if you've been doing a good job with the uh, sine, cosine, tangent. All right. So you can't apply thirds. Let's do it. I'm going to drive the angle in standard position. Pi thirds. It's right there. I'm going to write down the coordinates. Secant is 1 divided by the cosine. It's the reciprocal of the cosine. It's the reciprocal of the x-coordinate. Well, my x-coordinate is 1 half. The reciprocal of that is 2 over 1. The secant of pi is 2. That's it. I'm just flipping the x-coordinate. Secant, you flip the x-coordinate. Cosecant, you flip the y-coordinate. Cotangent, x over y. That's it. Let's do a couple more. Cotangent of negative 7 pi 6. Negative 7 pi 6. Do, do, do. It's a little bit more than negative pi. Here's my angle. Reference angle is 30 degrees pi 6. From that, I can think about these coordinates. Ooh, my x coordinate is going to be negative. My y coordinate is going to be positive. I'm doing cotangent. So instead of being y over x, it's. Oops, X over Y. Okay, not y over X. Okay, I wrote it Y over X. Cotangent. It's X over Y. X over Y. Remember that those twos just crisscross out. My answer is negative root 3. Let's do another one again. So secant of negative 5 pi. Draw the angle first. Negative one pi halves, negative two pi halves, negative three pi halves, negative four pi halves, negative five pi halves. What are the coordinates there? There's zero, negative one. Doing cosecant, which is one divided by the y coordinate. It's the reciprocal of sine. One divided by the y coordinate. Well, that's just negative one. Okay. You guys want to do one more? Yeah, let's do one more, just for fun. Secant of 16 pi thirds. 16 pi thirds. Let's be careful. Maybe I'll do a little bit of arithmetic. That's 16 divided by 3. It's going to be 5 pi and then an extra 1 third pi. Okay. So I'm going to start going around. 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, and an extra 1 third pi. I'm down here. My reference angle is pi thirds. Trying to figure out these coordinates. They're going to be negative one half, negative root three over two. I'm going to grab the x coordinate and flip it. Do the reciprocal of it. So instead of negative one over two, it's going to be two over negative one, which is negative two. That's my answer. Again, there's lots of practice in here. It's mixed together now. So now we're going to mix together sine, cosine, tangent. So you can't co, so you can't cotangent. But again, if you've been doing a good job with the sine, cosine, tangent, the secant, co, so you can't cotangent, same thing. Ah, uh, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, guys.